Thank you very much for coming. Um, first thing that I would like to do is sharing my feelings because this is my first tech conference and I am really scared. But at the same time, I'm really excited to share with you what happened when a biologist met Python. This biologist is me. Um, I did a PhD in molecular biology, and after a while, I was deciding if I stay in academia or go to industry. And in this time, I started to learn Python because I knew that it was useful for science, and, <coughs> and it was kind of. I, in, in this point, I discovered I start to discover some models and packages that was kind of amazing. Um, in that point, I start to, I don't know, to have a kind of revelation. She, wow, this is amazing. Why I didn't start to use it before this moment? Well, I decided to move to industry uh, where I'm working as a product data manager, uh, e-commerce platform that we sell products for scientists. And one of my role was uh, looking for new, res new resources, in this case, publications. And it was in that moment when I realized and I discovered some amazing tools that I thought, why I cannot share with the world this new discovery? And that is uh, why I am here today. Well, this, this uh, talk is not a conventional talk. We are going to have a biological adventure, um, but with Python. That means that we are going to cover some different biological topics and how Python can have a role in this. As you can see, will be really different topics. My first story is about plants, because plants are amazing. They are there, and they cannot walk, they cannot speak, but even that, they can communicate one of each other. Imagine the situation. We are in our living room, we have a plant that is living there, really happy, and this plant perceives or see the light with two different kind of waves. But we thought, oh, it's an amazing situation, but maybe I can buy a new plan and put it there because my plan is really happy there. I can have a, a new one near. And in this situation, you arrive to your home, to your living room, you left your plan, and the second plan also see the light to the same way. But this plan also reflects a kind of uh, wave, saying that uh, one plant can detect to another, and they are started to be unhappy because they are feeling that they are in danger. They need to survive because they are in competition for light. Amazing topic. It, this was my topic of thesis. And imagine that you want to know about this syndrome that is uh, generative for this situation that is called shade avoidance syndrome. And this is where Python can help us. We can use this model called BioPython to look for more information. In this case, it's a simple example where I am looking in a database called PMC, uh, as you can see in the line five, and also, um, I am looking for terms. I choose this, uh, this database because it contains open access publications. But there are many other databases that you can look, a uh, lot of kind of information related with different fields and in, in science in general. <coughs> in the second part of the script, we are doing a parsing of the information, and then, what we are going to change in this case is title and URL. But again, we can obtain piece of text and other information. And um, we can see that this also has two different publications in open access uh, um, 
art journals, sorry. Well, I, sorry, I, did, I give you a spoiler for the, my next story, but I wanted to say the last thing. Remember, if you have to plant really close at home, give, give some space to them. They will be happier. My next story is about avocado, because avocado is a fruit from other era. I don't know if you know that, but this is the, the, the aspect that the primitive avocado was, had. The, the seed was huge, and this was a really problematic issue because they, it, it is really difficult, the dispersion of this, uh, of this seed. But thanks to this animal, well, not this, to the grand, grand, grand parent, but it was a giant slot around four meters of size <coughs> that ate avocados. Uh, we have avocados nowadays. But you can think, yeah, but the, this is an animal around four meters, only avocado, it's enough. Well, it was not enough uh, for this animal. He needs to eat the avocados and other fruits, and for that, he needs to move around a lot. And that was really useful for avocados because there was a, a huge distribution of this fruit and could survive. But in some point, this animal disappeared, and, but uh, humanity appeared, and also we discovered that avocado were amazing. Nowadays, avocado are trendy food, and for me, I am a bit worried about the prices of avocados, because uh, trendy food, sometimes people uh, increase the prices, and well, for that, I analyze the prices. I wanted to visualize the prices of avocados in a range of years with, um, with Bokeh. Bokeh is a model that uh, allows us an interactive, um, produced interactive plot in a really easy way. Uh, of course, this script is a bit uh, summarized. Uh, I forget to tell you that we, we, I summarize a bit the scripts because it's too long, it's a lot of examples, but uh, all the information is available in my GitHub that I'm gonna give you later. Don't worry if you see that it's only some short pieces of the script. Well, uh, sorry, the, as I was telling you, the, it's a really simple way to do it. Uh, we read the data and then we uh, choose uh, the characteristic that we want to use in our, uh, the style that we want to use in our plot, in this case, um, dots and lines. And, well, we're gonna try to do a uh, trial. Yeah, well, the dots, uh, the, the dots is a um, uh, distribution of the prices uh, in, the lines is the average of the prices and the different colors, the blue is organic and the red is conventional. As you can see, we have a different, uh, different prices, but the tendency in time is similar. Well, this about uh, avocados. Uh, my next uh, topic or my next story is about virus. Because, I, sorry, because viruses are amazing organisms, but do you know that still nowadays scientists are not sure if they are alive or not? It's kind of an uh, amazing topic, but sometimes produces uh, uh, a lot of illness and a lot of problems. This is the, ca the case of virus Zika that the information that we have nowadays is that it's transmitted by mosquito uh, the, from the family Aedes. We don't have uh, vaccination to prevent the, the illness. And these are the symptoms we have. Uh, if we are infected, we can have fe fever, rash, and pain. And the most serious and dangerous is microcephalia in newborns. 
here is the distribution of, um, of the virus nowadays. And the most important thing in, in when we are talking about viruses or uh, uh, illness is how fast does it spread. For that, we can use networks, that is a model that uh, help us to visualize uh, the network, to generate a network. In this case, we are going to analyze cases uh, of illness in Brazil. The first, we generate a, a graph, a plot, with different nodes that represent different cities of Brazil. And we are going to see how was the evolution of the spread of this virus. Um, let's see. Well, this is the difference, uh, the different cities. We have different colors that represent the, the amount of, uh, of cases. As you can see, it's in range in uh, every time that uh, go from one range to another, uh, grow the, the size of the, of the ball and also change the color. When I was preparing the talk, I was thinking, wow, it's amazing how Python can help to biology. But I, I was a study on using a bit of machine learning and things. I said, yeah, but I can see also biology in Python. How can this, uh, how? And I, I start to say, yeah, I think that biology inspired computing. And I want to share with you this point of view. One example, there are many of these examples, but one example is the evolutionary algorithm. In, specifically in this case, this is one of the examples that I love it, for that I choose it, but it's ants colony optimization. In this case, it's based in, in ants. Ants can go to the nest, to the, to the food, because they use pheromones, and they can communicate one to in, to another using pheromone communication. And this is really useful because uh, when they have some troubles in the way, they have a rock or something, they can say one or to each other, hey, this is the easy way to arrive, it's, or this is shorter way to do it. This is a kind of optimization process, and it's similar. What, um, what, or it's the base of, the, uh, of this algorithm. But it's not the only one, of course. We have also the neural networks. Neural networks is based in our brain, specifically in neurons. Neurons um, communicate one or two each other with um, electrical impulse and go from one to each other. Imagine that we have an, an input. You can see something, you receive information, you have an input, and then this information is going from one neuron to another one. And then we can produce an output. In this case, it's like, oh, or whatever. It's the same idea that, go, that it's applying in artificial neural network, but we need to have some things in mind that it's not exactly the same. But we are going to do an experiment. I think that it's moment to prepare yourself because I want that I'm going to show you a picture. And I need that you count how many, how many seconds do you need to recognize the object in this uh, picture. Are you ready? Yeah? OK. Let's go. Three, two, one, three. Do you need one second, maybe? Raise your hand if you need one second. More? Less. Less. Um, scientists, um, it's described that our brain uh, needs 0.1 second 
to recognize an object that you see it before. That means that if you know this object, you can use 0 0.1 seconds. It's really fast. It's really efficient, our brain. What, uh, what our brain or what our body is doing is analyzing this picture. We are analyzing shapes, we are analyzing colors, we are analyzing by a small parts. Similar what is doing uh, some uh, machine learning. And here, I'm going to talk a bit about PyTorch uh, model. I don't, I don't have a lot of information to say after the talk of yesterday. I don't know if you were here, but it was kind of amazing uh, guy explaining uh, all about PyTorch. But I would like to uh, only indicate two different important treats for me. In this case, we are going to load a uh, um, data set uh, of flowers because we want to, do, uh, we want to identify uh, flowers. We are going to use uh, a model called ResNet50 that was pre-trained. That this model it uh, has a, a specific characteristic. It's based in pyramidal cells. That means that these uh, these cells are not using layer by layer. The cells is go, it ha can um, send information from one layer to another far away, and this is what this model also do. In this case, we train and also evaluate and also test. And here we have the results. We have an image classification with different um, plant species. But sometimes this is amazing and works good, but needs time and money. And sometimes we don't have this time. This is the example. This is the case for the for the next example that is about the snakes and patter. Imagine that you have a friend who is on holidays, and so two different snakes take two pictures, yeah, and and send to you this picture and say, "Hey, you know, I know that you know biology and also Python. Can you help me about?" to if I am in danger or it's fine the situation, what I can do. And of course, uh, this person sent to you a perfect pattern, clear, you know, like real life, real data, uh, all amazing. You can see all the pattern. And for that, we can use this model. Also, um, uh, this, this model, uh, we can analyze the pixels of the images. Or, well, we have another option, because maybe you can remember this poem that, it's, that say, red touch yellow kills a fellow, red touch black, venom black. But maybe you have bad memory as me, and you don't remember if it was kills a fellow Kiss a fellow, kill, okay, no. Better use a script in Python, it's, uh, it's safe, it's safety. In this case, we write an image, I generate a grid scale, only to simplify, I get um, a middle line of uh, pixels, and then I translate to obtain the colors. And that is what we have. This is the image that your friend saw in, in the nature, and this is the patterns that you obtain. And after that, you can say, hey, you are a safe, go to the right, because the left is a venomous one. The biological strategy of this uh, snake, it's, uh, if this is not a venomous uh, snake, it's, um, it's a snake that imitates only the colors to be a safe of the predators. I sorry. Well, my 
last story is how does happiness look like? Do you have an idea? Do you have an idea how does happiness look like? No? No? Okay. Well, first of all, a uh, description about happiness, overall appreciation of one's life as a whole. Well, it's one definition of happiness. But after that, they say, oh, I want to know what is the world happiness countries in this world. Based in the World Happiness Report of this year, these are the top five uh, countries. If you are from one of these, uh, of these uh, countries, please share with all of us <laughs> what, what is the secret. And please, <laughs> because we need to learn why and how arrive there. Well, imagine that you want to visualize the happiness. We can use this, um, this model that, that is called RD Kit. And really easy way, we can use the smile, that it's a chemical formula. We can transform these uh, formulas, and we can visualize the happiness. And here we have the four or hormones in humans that are related with happiness. It's that all now. We have a lot of models and packages uh, related with biology and science. Only briefly, uh, two words about EcoPy. EcoPy, it's a, it's a model used in ecology, and we can measure the diversity uh, factors. My take home message are the following, the following one. Python help to scientists in, a, in, a, in this specific case in bio, to biologists, as you see. But biology is helping to computing or inspiring to computing and also to Python. If we work together, the scientists start to collaborate more with the tech um, people and or if we normalize Python in in science, we can increase the diversity in the community, and this enrich Python and enrich all of us. And of course, if you have some idea of model package, please do it. Collabor do, um, do the, generate more tools, because even you think that it's not, uh, not so important, really, there are a lot of people who is using these tools. Anonymously. <laughs> well, this is what happened with a biologist made Python. And I, I finished only saying that all the information is uh, available in my GitHub. Uh, oh, and uh, thank you very much. And I hope that you enjoyed the talk. Thank you. <laughs> I realized that there was a lot of manual task that was not, has no sense to be in these years doing this task by hand or not automatically way. And even I try to ch introduce some changes, you know that changes need time. And in academia, uh, it's quite conservative. And when I finished and I was uh, with my own, I decided to, to explore all this, uh, all, all this interest that I had to do the things more automatically and more effective way. But, yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>